was a Honda. A 99 that we drive in play Nirvana. It never started right away, it didn't wanna. Let me get too far from here. I was still too young to realize that these summertime drives, they don't last your whole lifetime. I think it was a Honda. I run another lot to get through the night. Scared as shit, but I know that I'm alright. We were 17, pure like kerosene. You protected me, you were my sunscreen. You protected me, you were my sunscreen. Stronger than I've ever been before. Happy Tuesday? What? 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 Uh, it's Tuesday, Bryce. I have been told that it is Tuesday. If only somebody tweeted about it. Listen, that is an easy, <laughs> that's an easy social media campaign that people are reacting I love to. That it's, I love that people dig it, though, for yeah. whatever reason. Oh, you know your lights are off, right? Oh, crap. Hold on, yeah. <laughs> it's been hot. It's been hot today. Oh, so yeah. 109. Hey, James, you can sit right there. Yeah, uh, it was like 109 uh, on the drive over here. And that uh, blew <laughs> Uh, Brian will be up in just a minute. Hi, everybody. Hello. Yo, yo. Ooh, everyone having a good Tuesday? Everyone have a good weekend? Did you guys have a good weekend? Do anything fun this weekend? Dude, five days in Vegas. A man is not supposed to live five days on the strip. Yeah. You, uh, you, you guys uh, ended up meeting up with the Ice Cream Social guys, and it sounded like you guys did a ton of recording. What happened with that? One episode's, one episode's out, um, and then for they backed another one that I think they're going to save for maybe a month and a half because uh, Donnelly's going on vacation, so I think they're banking stuff for like a longer a longer run. Yeah. Um, Everybody's yeah, milk, leg and leg and milk, milk, leg is still legs of milk to me. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a little spoiler alert for Oops. a month and a half from now. <laughs> but it was very, very funny. It was a great time mm. hanging out with them. And uh, uh, yeah, and then we got to hang out a little bit more. Um, oh, we should have bugged you guys to make a, a, a do a night attack with them because we got we got that live show coming up and we don't have. We I fill believe that night. Matt, at least I don't th I don't think both of them, but I think Matt is uh, committed to flying out to I don't think he said what the air date is, but he knows the air date of his Penn and Teller Fool Us video. And we oh, talked about doing... Do or, okay, yeah. I, I, I think he's going to fly out to do, like... I, basically, I said, like, uh, hey, you know what should exist is a thing where everybody on Penn and Teller Fool Us comes and provides free content for me where we talk about the behind the scenes of every Penn and Teller Fool Us. And he was like, uh, I've already booked my ticket. <laughs> Speaking of which, I took Marcus Eddy to uh, uh, Five Guys to reward him for his Pin and Teller Foolish appearance. I heard he crushed it. I heard he did, he great. did great. He did great. I'm so happy. Because he did it before and didn't fool them, and then he got determined and came back and had a really, really good routine. You know, all original stuff. He's such a clever guy. Wait, so that was his second appearance on there? Mm-hmm. How wonderful! What a, what what an easy narrative arc for them to run with. Well, they've been doing that. They've been bringing back a lot of people because they've kind of like, you know, the, the America's Got Talent problem is is like, yeah, we've pissed off every magician, <laughs> you know, we've we've embarrassed the best, <laughs> you know, so you know, Penn and Teller because everybody has a positive experience on it and it's great for magic, you know, it's yeah, you know, it's. Uh, alrighty, guys, you about set to do weird things? Yeah. Let's do it. Andrew? Yes. Yeah, already here. Let me count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. 
Hey, what's up, folks? Brian Brushwood. Hey, man, I'm having complicated feelings. And, and Mr. Bryce Castillo. Oh, I have very simple feelings about your complicated feelings. <laughs> They're boring. What? I just, no, I just, I no, uh, my, my complicated feelings are I, I, I like the fact that Google has figured out everything I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. But it's weird when you just recognize that, oh, this is all because you figured me out, isn't it? Like, uh, yeah, Google News figured out. If Elon Musk says something interesting about Mars, then, yeah, let me just serve that up for you. And then... Uh, mm -hmm. But then separately over on YouTube, they hit me up with the uh, the the in a nutshell the uh, Kurzgott I, I can never say it uh, yeah Kurzgott Kurs um, uh, about how wildly irresponsible, difficult, challenging, insane, gruesome, and uh, horrific the prospect of colonizing Mars is, and yet why we should do it anyway. And uh, so I definitely spent like all day just reading up on Mars stuff. You know, it's a very good point because I get that that feed where sometimes there's some cool stuff. And my problem with YouTube recommendations is like, how about this red letter media video? I've seen it. You know, how about <laughs> no? I, I've watched that too, and I'm getting tired of telling you stop pushing these things because I've watched this entire inventory of stuff. My fear is this: every day it begins to feel like Groundhog Day. Yeah. Well, and so. I think I think you you're you're onto something there because it's not just the offense of being told what to watch, it's the offense of being told to watch something that you've already seen before. And the worst part of the whole experience is when you hit play anyway, and you're like, you know what? I'm really glad you told me to watch this again. Uh, I I had forgotten a lot of this, and then you just realize that we're just dumb meat puppets. They're being, I don't know, you manage even that that and also sort of like. Like, my algorithm's probably not changed in four or five years. And that's what kind of concerns me is the idea that maybe it'll be the new, here's the new thing he said. And the thing, and it's like, man, like, am I growing as a person? If algorithm, if my world is shaped by algorithms and the algorithms are going to, it, they're, they're tuned not for, and they're, quick example. If you go to a really good zoo, like Animal Kingdom, Disney's Animal Kingdom, which is an amazing zoo. One of the things the zookeepers do is they move around the gorilla's food every single day, right? So yeah. every day the gorilla's to keep life, uh, uh, that, that's, that's for the health of the animal, to keep life interesting so they don't commit gorilla suicide or whatever. It's great. They're still stuck in a zoo, though. <laughs> you, you know, it, it's, a better, it's better than just throwing the bananas at the gorillas, which they don't like. Don't do that. It's better than that, but and it's in a step up. There's enough variety, but it's still contained, but... You know, in the wild, like, I, you know, you see, like, exhibits where they have, like, dolphins in contained environments and stuff. Like, these things, they roam hundreds of miles, and and maybe they're okay with it, but – and and my thing is that the algorithm cage, the idea that – and it's not anybody's fault, okay. I, but I've – got, I've got a really weird leap that I want to make, and, and, and if it doesn't land, that's fine. But uh, have you guys seen this upcoming documentary on the Filipino prison – where they do all the crazy YouTube dance videos, like, oh, uh, this you know, is an what, upcoming uh, Netflix original, Happy Jail. Take take oh, just a moment to take a look at this. You'll you'll recognize these guys. Uh, these, oh no, this no, no, yeah, I know this prison. Yes, you, I like Brian's. Like you'll recognize these guys. <laughs> a lot of Night Attack fans there. <laughs> <laughs> but these are this is where they filmed that iconic the Thriller uh, uh, video where they recreate like the whole music video of Thriller in the in this prison courtyard what i really hope they explore is uh, let, let's take uh questions of corruption and and you know societal differences aside we have a collection of people that all are in a timeout and you might as well do something like like you were saying, it might as well be a, a good algorithm, a, 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 a good experience in the zoo while you're in time out, right? I mean, um, and it's also therapeutic, right? Creative exercises helping to work on rehabilitating. Uh, also, inmates. somebody could say a megalomaniacal warden treats human beings as puppets to dance for his own amusement. Like it's it's a complicated enough idea that I would love to. I, I I hope they do a really good job with this documentary. Yeah, well, see if yeah like a lot I mean, of that, that brings up whole other like like 
yeah, you know, like well, Mexican, and, and then you Mexican get the complicated like question of, of during rehabilitation, should people experience any form of joy? Like, like, are you are you uh, undercutting the entire rehabilitation experience by by giving anybody anything to be proud of? Well, is it rehabilitation? With the first question, and I, I mean, I don't have a problem. I mean, I don't listen. I I don't think we should treat people like animals. Let me make that very very clear. My my question is like one. Who are these? What are these people going to jail for here? Because, you know, I know in some countries it's like, oh, you know, uh, you for know, disagreeing. There's, there's, <laughs> but the, yeah, oh, the, yeah, the criminal population there might be different. I don't I don't know. And I, I don't I would begin it. But I mean, I'm like, but there's also the idea of it. The problem is that for if you've never been to jail and close members of your family have never been to jail, jail is this very, very scary thing that keeps you from doing things that might put you into jail. If your family member has been in jail, you've grown up with this as a reality jail is not the same deterrent sure sure you know and that's the uh it, it, so i don't ah, that's a whole nother question but. happy jail is the name of the do we know when it comes out yeah it's um august 14 oh yeah. tomorrow hey, wow tomorrow. hey tomorrow. happy happy jails day <laughs> it's a do, it's a docu series jails eve <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, in my family, Jail's Eve is when we got to watch just a little bit of Happy Jail, <laughs> which I feel like we just did. <laughs> One segment. <laughs> but back to the whole the, the algorithm prison sort of mentality, the idea that, you know, we we keep getting reinforced. You know, we talk about the echo chamber, but then our own little personal echo chambers. I feel like this every day that like. Like, man, yesterday was a lot like the day before. And this was a lot like, I mean, one of the reasons I went out and did my Shark Week thing was because, like, like, man, like, this year was a lot like last year. And that scares me. So let me do, maybe I went a little bit overboard on, you know, my solution no, I, for but, that. But, but I, I definitely resonate with that because um, the last two or three years have been really delightful because – we hit a position and maybe we're getting into after things talk here, but, but we entered a place where I could be much more present uh, at home and being present at home means taking kids to various uh, things at various days. And I, I, I went a good 20 years without really have, having a routine of any variety. And, and all of a sudden I realized I'm like, Ooh, I'm kind of in a routine. Don't I hate routines? And then I'm like, yeah, I do, but I love my kids. And here I am doing a routine, and uh, well, it's Monday. That means I got to take the one kid to the one thing, and so on. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah. You know, do you, Do you think that the count? I mean, it, it, is it going to be algorithms that will get us out of that? Because I, I, like I look at Twitter, right, and everyone doesn't like when Twitter takes them off of the latest tweets version and it shows them, oh, your friends favor this, oh, your friends follow these people, but. That's at least the algorithm trying to expose you to stuff that you didn't explicitly sign up for. But people don't want that or, you know, or they say they, well, don't, they, say they don't want yeah. that. The algorithm is still serving you things from a restaurant. Maybe what you don't want to go to do is go to the restaurant is just go make your own food and have a picnic. I mean, I guess sure. the I thing mean, is I, that. Uh, yeah. As an alternative to logging off or, or, you know, using a different service. Yeah. Or even even that that. Google's going to push things that bring you back into Google experiences. You know, you're not going to get pushed over to the Netflix thing or some game that's only on the iPhone app store that even within that, that world of staying logged in, it's, it's, and it's not a fault. I'm not criticized. I'm just saying a thing that I try to be mindful of. It's like, you know, you're the same things are feeding and it's, it's bringing me more of the same, which maybe it's not bad, but I, I try to be aware of that. Well, and at the end of the day, all algorithmic decisions are based on you staying on the platform, right? Or maximizing your time, maximizing your clicks, maximizing your interaction. They view success as this created more of that and failure as this created less of that. Whether or not it means that we are better or more successful or more robust or growing, right? So it's like, even if they are feeding it, so to your point, Bryce, it's like, okay, yeah, well, now they are feeding you things, and indeed, we're reacting. We don't like it. We don't like it as much as we like the other thing, and and maybe that is a sign of like, okay, well, maybe they should be doing more of that. Maybe this is maybe this is a, a giving us things that you challenge us and then make us give us new situations where we're like, okay, well, let's fill in the negative data of uh, of, of what we don't like. Maybe that helps us fill in. Okay, well then maybe there's another thing that you do like that is the the do, opposite. Of that. 
that. <laughs> Do we need like <laughs> we'll call a service? We'll call it homework. <laughs> yeah. And, and and it's like ah uh, hey Bryce, your homework is you got to go outside today and listen to bird calls for half an hour. Mm-hmm. You know, Google vegetables. Like, yeah, something like exactly like, hey, let's give this this randomization kind of thing of like this. I don't know. It's liberal arts education, you know, in an RSS feed. Yeah, exactly. That would be interesting, like a, a daily objective. So it's it's the further gamification of life, though. We, uh, I, I, I think we've talked about this before. That That's what Pokemon Go, uh, Go is doing for Niantic, right? Uh, Niantic sure. sells all of that data. They figure out, uh, for whatever reason, whether it's an intelligence agency, somebody somewhere really needs up-to-the-minute photographs of this area. Uh, guess where a new Pokemon gym just showed up? And uh, children go and take photos of that area. I, I wasn't trying to get to the go, oh, go outside thing. I mean, you can just be inside your, you know, like find five ways to cook an egg. I'm just saying like the idea of like, the, the I, computer I, I don't think the answer to everything is log off. Yeah. I think maybe we'll log on more. I did, but it's just oh, no, like, no, no. And, and I, I'm not even saying that. In fact, I want to go the uh, the opposite direction. Imagine, uh, maybe this is uh, better served as a science fiction novel that I'll talk about never getting around to writing. But but imagine there's a company that offers a uh, blue pill bliss, uh, by which they say, hey, what say you opt out of regular society red you already you already have the red pill in that you're getting the raw feed of everything that is happening and it turns out there's a lot of ugly things happening in the world um we all want to believe that we could be that one unique beautiful snowflake uh, beyonce uh, who who makes it in life uh join the blue pill society here at microsoft 2.0 uh you don't have to worry about money anymore we take care of money uh, U.S. dollars, uh, sign all that over to us. We'll give you something that very quickly you'll care about more than uh, 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 real U.S. money. Uh, you won't care about status because we're going to feed your diet. You will no longer read the news as it exists in the outside world. You'll only read the news that we provide to you. But don't worry, everything is very carefully curated so that you constantly have a low grade perception that you are doing better, getting ahead at life, that your family's being taken care of. You don't have to worry about uh, 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 health care because we genuinely do take care of your your physical body because that is valuable biotechnology to us. Uh, so in other words, you will guaranteed live uh, anywhere between 40 and 80 more years of your life. And you will consistently in our audits report increased satisfaction with the style of your life, the trajectory that you're working on, the value of what you do. All we ask is that we be the ones to control your information diet and, uh, and handle everything for you and be our are, batteries. Are, are you the bad guy in sorry to bother you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you L. Ron Hubbard? I mean, but but here's my question is 10 years ago, everything I just said sound, would sound insane and everybody well, would I... agree that nobody would take that pill. But in a world where we're increasingly being ugly to each other on various social media platforms, I wonder, and we're increasingly worried about whether or not we'll be taken care of by the next generation. I, I wonder if, if how many people would go for that nowadays. Well, I, I would I mean, I would say there's tons of precedent on that. You described in many ways what a cult does. I mentioned Scientology because they're like, don't need to pay attention to the world out there. We'll tell you what's important. Tune in here. Many versions, you go I'll hop on a carnival cruise line. You know, it's like, ah, don't worry about cash. Just bring your band or whatever it's paid and do that. And so we have forms of escapism as, as far as like the 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 by and large version of it or the 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 techno version of it maybe you know i mean what's what's a retirement home going to be like in 20 years where it's going to be like you know for you know 30 years from now like we're going to have the best vr hookups and everything and stuff so i think i think yeah we people have been willing to buy into versions that religion offers a version of that they're like here's the book that's really important mm-hmm. You know, here's the thing that this and so sure, sure. I mean, I guess I guess what I'm thinking of is the consent side of thing. But I guess you're right when you bring up cults. They've, they've always had consent. But but the idea of saying like, hey, you're going to solve problems. You're going to you're going to. Uh, OK, you want to live in red pill reality. We're going to send you to 35 different sales conferences. We're going to make you pitch for three days at a time uh, or 
what if you go to blue pill reality where you're still doing the same thing, only you perceive yourself as you're solving a, a quest for, for this pirate's gold and, and, and you will perceive, and you'll never hear about who's president and you'll, you'll, to you, you're going to be playing world of Warcraft all the time and everybody's going to be clapping for you because you know what? Digital claps are very cheap for us to provide for you so that you're going to get that same serotonin rush. You're going to be filled with joy as everybody claps when you discover the gold. I had a very similar thought to that, Brian, on the strip on Saturday night while I was walking with David Rowan and we were being accosted by religious protesters <laughs> because I wondered, what is that experience to them? Because I have no doubt that it is, it is so much different than where I think it is. I think it is somebody that is being aggressive and yelling at people that are trying to have a good time. But for them, they are actively trying to save the world you know for for however they got there uh uh that is what they are trying to do they are they are doing their best to do it and and, uh, and on top of that they're engaging in that classic las vegas pastime of gambling like they're fishing to them they're like oh my god i got somebody's interest i got them on the hook i think i might be able to convince them and then it's like oh my god i saved a soul look at the size of the soul take a selfie of me with the giant soul that i just saved Sounds I got like stopped cannibals <laughs> three days ago walking out of Jamba Juice in North Hollywood by an, an older guy handing out brochures like, oh, check out this this new website. I'm like, well, that doesn't sound ominous. <laughs> you know, I'm like, well, what is it for? And he goes, Scientology. I'm like, oh, well, pro or con. <laughs> He's like, well, well, pro, like well, what? It, like, you know, you should experience for yourself and find out. And I'm like. And I wasn't not trying to argue with the guy. There's a point. I'm like, well, I mean, I, I have friends that were former Scientologists, and they've told me quite a lot, you know, including people who were Sea Org members, and it was a negative experience. And I had a friend who dated, like, the sec his mom dated, like, one of the second highest people in there. I said, you know, dated, like, 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 from everybody I know from the inside are telling me to stay clear. <laughs> and he's like, it's like, well, I can't tell with their experience and stuff. I'm like, well, I just did. Is it if. If I'm not talking, I said, you know, I've read, I've read, and like, well, maybe you should read the book or something. I'm like, oh, I read it. And it was just this sort of thing. And he's like, well, you know, you know, I'm, you know, I'm only, I'm new at this. So I've only been at it for, for 50 years. And I wanted to be like, I don't want to be mean, but I'm like, you've been in this organization for 50 years. And the best use for you and your skills is to put you on a street corner in North Hollywood handing brochures up to people coming out of Jamba Juice. <laughs> Hold just on. Maybe. Now, oh, okay, okay. So in my science fiction novel, Maybe it begins on the one day a year because they want to maintain consent and they want everybody on the same page and nobody should be here who doesn't want to be here. So one day a year, you are told... Purge? A purge, Brian? A purge? You, we... <laughs> one day a year, you are given the complete story of what the rest of the world looks like. So it begins with you walking into your audit, let's say, and then and you take a pill uh, that basically you're now entering a... Uh, a, a, a hypnotic uh, memory amnesiatic uh, phase where it's like, uh, you know, much like uh, ambient or whatever, like, like you won't remember this. You're already in a blackout. You, you're fully in your faculties, but, but you know that everything happening now, you will not remember. And then you get to, you get to, if you want to, you can see the way the world is and you can, you can uh, opt out, but then, uh, or you can decide to, you know, re up for just one more year of blue pill you know, life. I mean, Brian, I mean, that's that's that part of that. That's like what the Amish do. Like, your kids reach a certain age, they're like, "Go see that." Ho there you go. Rum Springer. <laughs> Rum yeah, Rum like, Springer. Go, go yeah. see what an awful world it is, then come back to, you know, Amish land. So that, in, in, that seems um, moral, I think. In, right. In this story, is this lifestyle? Are you for it? Or are you getting it? Like what? Oh, I don't know. Nice. That's, that's part of what's fascinating. Yourself. Have you figured this out? <laughs> it would be to me. What I was would wondering, be fun? like, what the moral kind of of this of of this story. All right, no, no, no. Hold on. Hey, actually, I, I, that uh, that's late stage stuff. I'll have to figure out that well. part later on. But now, all of a sudden, now you got me convinced. The first third of this book, the whole first act, mm -hmm. should completely unironically be a fantasy novel. Like it's just a really good fantasy novel. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden there's this crazy chapter where he woke up on the, the, the uh, on the 30th day and he wasn't at the camp. Instead, he was in a weird tube and mm -hmm. had an appointment with a so-and-so and, 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 and did whatever. And he decided, so like he had been in any, maybe, maybe a, a, 
I guess that would be the beginning on the Campbell uh, arc. That would be the beginning where he crosses the threshold and tries to understand this crazy world, which turns out to be reality uh-huh. that he's been We're doing Brian. the whole time. Let's just call him what his name is. Neo. <laughs> Neo. No, Brian. Oh, okay. oh, oh yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Brian Neo. Do I want do I want to go here or not? You know, I mean, I guess I guess I am just straight up describing the, the Matrix, but but I think that. there's, uh, but I think a that's, Matrix that's just how consent. relevant that story is. Yeah, right. I I, I don't I I think I think you're well, not no, far away were... from the relevancy of um, this movie that you you know adore. I guess you you might be talking about the the real Matrix prequel. Like like how did all the how did all the humans get enslaved? Oh, batteries, right. guys. Battery. All right, okay. I'm not going to take the bait on that one. We all know that was a garbage explanation. But I do like the idea that maybe, like, it's assumed that humanity was enslaved in the Matrix. But I do like the idea that we were seduced and voluntarily gave ourselves over to the Matrix. I think that's the the yeah. interesting idea that I want to play with. Play virtual virtual reality. It's uh, great. It's like you're playing virtual that... reality. Oh no no no! Yeah, 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 that's on Vive, right? Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, it's a real no, 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 it's a real thing. It's oh, okay. a real thing. Uh, I, I, in fact, that's, it's uh, a little bit close to like, like accounting. Justin Roiland's accounting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. It's oh. different. It that 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 I I thought I kind of was fun. Virtual was way deeper for me and and way more. The story there's a real storyline there sure. about what's going on. That's cool. Yeah. Well, um, and accounting yeah. started off as a free thing, so that totally understandable. Yeah. No, I'm not not, not back on accounting, but yeah, virtual virtual reality is this. The, the premise is it's a it's it's a game where in the future, um, AIs have taken over, and the only jobs left left for humans are to basically entertain them. Oh, to entertain the AIs. Mm. Yeah, like like you know you have an AI that likes to pretend he's a loaf of butter, a <laughs> loaf of bread, a uh, loaf of butter. Like he thinks he's a big thing of butter, so you a take bread butter? and you rub it all over him, and he's like, oh, so good. And then you know, all these toasters around you start popping more toast, and now you've got to keep. <laughs> You know, doing this, but it's not about that. But it's part of these crazy. Sure, sure, yeah. And yeah. then you get into deeper levels, and then you find out, like, you take off your VR glasses, and you're in another level, and another level, and you try to find out the story of what's really going on. So I, I really was a, one of my favorite profound kind of storytelling experiences in VR. So that's clever. So. I for, forgive me. I, I I don't want to take us too, down too many rabbit holes, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was it a year ago that you showed us some stuff you were working on that on an iPhone was able to identify individual targets and, YOLO. and say, you know, human car, this thing going that yeah, way. YOLO, the YOLO algorithm, the really fast one. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm horrified to even say this out loud and we don't have to go too deep on this discussion if it's uncomfortable given uh, uh, recent news, but I had the thought, why has somebody terrible not built a a sentry that just headshot 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 i mean i think that's northrop grumman I, well, well, yeah, I, no, I, well but, but military military that makes uh, the problems you have to deal with are making sure it's the enemy and all this other stuff uh but but if you're an industry indiscriminate psycho who just wants the highest body count or whatever mm-hmm. i i guess it, it it i'm horrified to even say this out loud like like why has that not already happened there are scopes well, that I mean, will like calculate there, and, and and the, the step between somebody doing it but no somebody made one as an our, our project they put a gun on a drone and showed how you could use the image targeting and stuff and it's that's frightening you know you see this idea that you do this but to your point, like, yeah, but remember, we've had a very old version of that, which is the not as discriminatory as bombing. You know, the you sure. know, the, the Unabomber did a version of that tech of I get a human to deliver this thing that will kill you to you. And yeah, so, I guess yeah, I guess it's, it's a, you'll, you'll... a rarity of expertise. Uh, in the Venn diagram is you have a rarity of expertise. You have the rarity of that sociopathy and you have the rarity of the uh, 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 the money to fund all of that. And then you have the rarity of like those who have those three are already employed by Northrop Grumman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you're it's coming becoming easier. Like I, it, it would not be a terribly complicated thing. But as you point out, like, you know, the 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 percentage of people that want to do these horrific acts is extremely minute. You know, by the news magnification, astonishingly we think that minute. Like 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 yeah. very few people I find are 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 really able to grasp just how rare it is that somebody wants yeah. to do that. Yeah, exactly. And so 
that's one factor. But, you know, there was a neat book in the 90s, A Cult at the End of the World, about the Amshri Ru cult, which was this Japanese cult, the ones that gassed the Tokyo subway station, and they were trying to make sarin gas. And they were got they got pretty far because a lot of the cult members were engineers. And so they had a whole facility to build, like to try to build gas and do this. They're a little bit <laughs> shocking, a little bit uh, uh, not quite knowing what the heck they want to do. But they had this charismatic cult re- leader who, you know, t- convinced them into doing this sort of thing. And they had a, 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 a serious weapons grade, you know, development program that, you know, they got far. But still what they were trying to do was technically hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, that's a pretty dark thought, but a very light thought is coming on over to patreon.com <laughs> slash weird things where you can support this show. You know, every once in a while, there's some travel snafus. Brian and I were on a plane when this uh, show normally records, but we make sure we come right back the next day to get you a uh, fresh episode of Weird Things only 24 hours late. That's the kind of dedication and commitment we have to you, the patrons of this show at patreon.com slash weird things. So, gentlemen, um, I have some cool news, and we talked about this a while ago on our show because we, we tend to be space eccentric says the guy wearing the SpaceX hat. But another company we've talked about is Rocket Lab, and Rocket Lab has been working on smaller uh, rockets, basically to focus more on like smaller satellites, CubeSats, etc. And part of their kind of cool innovation is they use an engine called the Rutherford, which uses batteries to power a turbine that spins and pumps the fuel through the rocket engine because they figured this was actually cheaper and for a smaller engine worked out really well. Um, their goal was, hey, we're going to build these rockets. We're going to make them super cheap. So you just launch them, launch whatever you want to space, and then move right along. They said, you know, reusability is not a thing. We're not really trying to pursue that. But last week, the head of Rocket Lab said, you know what? Uh, maybe not so much as a cost-saving measure, but more as a, you know, maybe we don't want to have to keep turning churning out rockets and keep building factories. Let's explore reusability. So that's their plan now is they want to start reusing the first stages of their rockets. And they're using, you know, something we've seen before, which is basically – the first stage would come back, but it wouldn't use propulsive, you know, like with SpaceX rockets, they go back and they use, they still have enough fuel to sort of enter and then slow themselves down. This, they're talking about building an, a rocket that's going to be a bit, I guess, a bit more heat resistant and basically just use aerodynamic drag to slow down and then use uh, a balut, which is a, a balloon slash parachute to slow it down, then a parachute and then pick them up midair with a helicopter. I mean, this, this- sounds crazy but but also uh, awesome this mm-hmm. was the initial plan for the ula rocket right the ula was going to use for the engines was to cover the engines and, okay. and using helicopters to retrieve stuff coming in from space is not a new thing um that's actually been done uh by you know since like the 60s so like the original spy satellites like keyhole and stuff they would have payloads that would pop out and then they would re-enter the earth's atmosphere and an airplane would come swoop up and pick up the the, the line from the parachute and pick that up. We just had one of our our Martian material retrieval missions. That's the way that's worked. Is we've used uh, basically, we've we've done uh, retrieval missions. You know, plans on the books, things that we're working on, basically using hell. So we've done that. They're doing a pretty big object. So it's kind of a cool step, though. I mean, uh, I understand everything about this announcement except for the addition of the phrase uh, "not as a cost-saving measure." Like, like. If not to save money, then why? Well, not not to lower the cost a lot. And, and, or, or, and, or not yeah, to act to, like it, this is, you know, uh, going to make us one of the cheapest options for X, Y, Z or whatever. Yeah, I mean, the way they phrase it was meaning more from the point of view of... It'll of, be quicker to turn them we around. Don't have, we don't have to keep building rockets. We can just keep reusing these. Mm-hmm. But, you know, because when SpaceX did it, they lowered the cost by 20 to 30 percent. I don't think Rocket Lo- Rocket Lab, I think, is trying to avoid the expectation that this will make the rocket launches cheaper. Got it. They're, they're saying this is not the secret sauce that's going to make us the cheapest way to do X, Y or Z. Uh, so set those expect- expectations correctly. But in the meantime, they're so right because a system that artificially intelligently manages uh, rocket thrust uh, is going to be more expensive than, you know, a parachute. And 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 a pilot yeah. for for well, gets, two hours of expertise, you know. But the thing is, it does get 
you know, when you start looking at what it costs to send the recovery ship out there, helicopter time, those things, they do add up. And that's that's where, you know, SpaceX, because their, their ships are exponentially bigger, but you talk about the number of crew involved, you know, it, but it, they have obviously, they've, they've said they've done the math and they're looking to do it. So we'll see. And, and I don't think we talked about it, but, you know, SpaceX, you know, we saw they were able to, do we talk about catching the fairing? Oh, I, I think we did mention the fact that they finally pulled it off on on formerly Mr. Steven. I still don't know why they changed the name. To no, well, Miss Tree. Miss and Tree. And be Miss Chiff. Yeah. Did we watch the video of that on here? Uh, I think we did. Yes. Okay. Nice. Because I don't know so, yeah, in where the I net, would have seen it. In the net, right? And yeah, you can see yeah, it right yeah. in the corner. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. is the latest The latest one they just caught. The, I think they've done the second. They did it a second time last week. If this is the new. Yeah, look at that. I think That's the. I mean, There's it's, a better it's, video it's, online. It's low that tech, one. but but it 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 is also. I mean, that ain't nothing considering it came from you know outside the planet. That's fairly yeah. precise. Wow. Yeah, kind of incredible. So, uh, pretty. We're just watching this this this. You know, and you think about the scale gets lost. You know, we've been in there and we've seen, you know, at SpaceX the size of those fairings, and you know, you could fit a school bus in there. Oh yeah, so, no, they are massive. Insane. Mm-hmm. And it lands very gently, right? That's the another difference is it doesn't kind of have to uh, what retrograde propel like propel itself off of the ship to ha- like it lands very very softly on the net. Yeah, uh, and whereas the reusable first stages, I mean they they come to Earth pretty quickly and have to do a big old burst to stop from being a bullet headed towards planet Earth. Yeah. Uh, I want to do one more quick topic just because uh, this came up in uh, one of my, my feeds and it was a very interesting article about self-created hallucinations about the use of drugs. And I'm like, man, we should get the guys who this article's referencing on the show or at least one of them. Uh-oh. Brian. This is you, Brian. Wait, what? It was a Scam Nation reference. They, they're reading this thing on Science Alert and they're talking about, oh, you know, here's a thing about self-created hallucinations. Oh, that's and stuff. amazing. This is, oh, this is wonderful. I didn't know that, 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 that this happened. Mode. Yeah. Oh, uh, they, uh, oh yeah. They, they credit it to Scam Nation because it originally came out on the Scam School channel back then. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. Great. So, so we, uh, 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 this is the Gansfeld uh, uh, effect. And it's, um, Basically, uh, the, the experiment is shockingly simple. All you have to do is take a piece of white paper, uh, cut it so that it looks like a, a weird pair of Oakleys or something that you put over your head and, and put white noise into your ears. And it is astonishing how fast the human body, in the absence of any significant input or, or uh, in, in the presence of pure noise, just gets to work manufacturing like well, there's got to be something out there. So what are we seeing, boys? And uh, uh, what uh, the whole experience was, what, 20 minutes long? Is that right, Bryce? I think under 20 minutes. I think you guys got up right before the timer, but yeah. Yeah, and, and there was this moment that um, it looked to my eyes like I was standing in uh, what, what now I would think of as like the Westworld set, basically. And uh, you see faces. Uh, it, it's 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 really remarkable. It's a highly... yeah. It, you heard stuff too, right? Wasn't yeah. that part of it as you, you tried to make sense out of some of the white noise? Yeah, so you're hearing the white noise. And uh, again, your brain is hard at work saying like, well, that's got to be something. So what is it? And I heard everything from children laughing to uh, somebody moaning, trying to say something. Uh, it, it, it truly was a great experience. Experience. Wow. Thank you, Science. That's it is the the more I've been diving into like uh artificial intelligence and deep learning and stuff, and you look at you watch these algorithms as they try to process images and sounds and stuff, it seems it's so much like what we like you described that. It's like you know that when you're half asleep, half awake, and your brain starts telling you this little kind of semi narrative and you're like, Oh, it's cause this led to this led to this. It's kind of spooky and weird. And if you you want to go really far down that rabbit hole, uh, fMRI studies seem to indicate that what we perceive as the the us in charge of our bodies isn't really so much an us so much as an after the fact narrative always lagging 100 milliseconds behind these limbic systems making decisions and then us justifying after the fact, you know, the decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. We're all meat puppets. <laughs> I'm okay with that. That's fine. No puppets. Be manipulated. Yeah. 
so anyway, check that out if you want. It's kind of fun. I need to see that pop up in Science Alert. And they, and they just kept saying the Scam Nation guys. The guys at Scam Nation. I mean, Those, they're not wrong. It was... The that was the channel it came out on at the time. Well, and, and probably know. the one I mean, that they started with. A name or two would have been cool. Also, <laughs> uh, the uh, it, it was very abundantly clear when we went to DefCon, like uh, uh, Modern Rogue only had its own channel for less than three years now, uh, and mm -hmm. I think Jason was in the first like three months of Scam School, so it's like. Uh, it's not wrong to sort of, by the numbers, credit us as more the Scam Nation guys than the Modern Rogue guys, weirdly enough. Oh, sure, sure. I was My issue wasn't the Scam Nation thing. It's like maybe mention an actual name of hey, a person. That's fine. You, you yeah. say the Mythbusters, we all know who you're talking about. The Legend Busters. <laughs> Tori. <laughs> uh, well, it's new guys now. Yeah, they got a new crew, right? Are they still doing that, yeah. the new, new Mythbusters? Yeah, I think they're still doing that. And then Adam has a new show called Savage Builds. So, yeah. yeah, smart move, putting his name in the title. Welcome to Brushwood Brands. <laughs> uh, you guys want to? I know we're pressed for time, so let's just jump into picks. Uh, I, I, I don't know that I have a. You know what? I, I, I got four episodes. I'm rewatching The Boys. I can't believe it. Nice. I, I found myself actively looking for think pieces and reviews. I watched Red Letter Media. Like, I got giddy when they were just going to talk about The Boys. And uh, and some part of the back of my brain was like, so uh, I guess you love The Boys. What say you watch it again? And I was like, well, I'm not the type to rewatch a show. And then instant flash forward to four episodes in. I'm rewatching it. It's great. It's really, really good. It's even better the second time around. Mm hmm Nice. Uh, I have a new thing to tell everybody. I'm watching the boys. <laughs> <laughs> watching the boys, baby. I don't know why no one's talking about it. It's a show on Amazon Prime. These superheroes, man. What the hell's happening with them? They're going crazy. Uh, no, I, I, and I'll, I'll echo something that I think Bryce said initially. I was kind of cold on. I was really cold on the trailer. I, I thought that the, the trailer just made it seem like super like number two edgy for number four letter u and uh i was i was like eh, okay i get like a more sophomoric kind of uh, uh watchman but even compared to preacher which is another uh, uh you know uh uh what's his butt show same guy uh, yeah uh, uh, same, same same writer uh, and also Garth produced Finish. by seth rogan both of them I eric think. kripke seth, yeah yeah Maybe. But like, it's a very different vibe. Like, like Preacher does have a lot more of that Gonzo element, and certainly there are moments of that in the boys. But the most fascinating element to me is the world building of, uh, uh, the strata of of a world where superheroes are both real in terms of, yes, they're real. Like you would understand a a of you know them to be literal, uh, you know, figuratively real, but also literally real. They are they exist in the same spot in culture. Uh, as as they do here as actors and uh, IP. And so I love that. And I love athletes. It. Every, yeah. Everybody makes human decisions in the show, which is one of the things I really liked was at no hand, at no point did I feel I saw the hand of the writer coming in and doing something. People did stupid things, but people do things, stupid things rarely. But I did feel like the writers were doing, let's just get from point A to point B and we'll just do this. You know, I felt like uh, the show was smart. Yeah, Everything a very a very strong pace too. Like only yeah. eight episodes, which is just the right amount of time. Of Marvel. <clears throat> uh, I have a pick of something I rewatched um, over over the weekend. I think I talked about this on. I must have been on the after talk for Court Killers yesterday. But I went back and rewatched uh, the first season that they put out of Homecoming, another Amazon Prime original. Mm -hmm. uh, man, this show holds up. Uh, I know they're dead. <laughs> not quite i've uh, never seen a single i have no idea I no just... yeah we uh we talked a little bit about it when it came out last year and um it's kind of got a, this mystery sort of suspense sort of vibe and once you know it you know it but watching it again you really see all of the the clues and all of the hints and all of the teases about like what's going on what what we're actually like even loose threads or unexplained bits that that are supposed to make you ask questions if I had missed them seeing it again, maybe go, Oh yeah, you know what? That's right. That's something 
I so it's good. Maybe it looks so boring to me. I haven't started it because it looks boring. It's so. very good and it's very short because they're only half hour uh, That's episodes. the secret. So uh, here's the funny part is if it was an hour long episode, I would agree. I wouldn't be have ever been able to finish it. Mm-hmm. But but I, I, I can't name another drama that is only in, in 23, 24 minute chunks. Certainly it, not on streaming. Well, and, and certainly yeah. not with the, the, the quality of, of visual direction from Sam Esmail. And, uh, and it, the Mr. Robot cinematographer too. I mean, it, like full staff, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it, 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 it just flies by. I, I It's one of those shows that you spend the majority of it being like, yeah, I don't know, I guess I'll watch another. Why not, let's go. And then you get to the end and you're like, uh, 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 oh, that was great. And it's only at the end that you realize how great it was because they kept it so light and short for so long. Yeah. And they're setting up for a second season, probably, probably going to come out in 2020, but the Julia Roberts won't be back, but Janelle Monae will be, or she will be joining the cast. And that will be very cool because she's a great actress. Uh, Homecoming on Amazon Prime Video. Uh, Did I mention Prospect before? I don't think you have. What so. a fun science fiction movie, Prospect. Prospect that stars Pedro Pascal, directed by... Pedro Z- Pascal Earl- is uh, uh, the guy from Narcos? Narcos, the soon-to-be-coming uh, Mandalorian. Oh, yeah, yeah. This was this yeah. is a movie from 2018. I, I, this... I totally missed this. Yeah, I don't know anything so about this. It's it's a story of a of a father and a daughter who are space prospectors, kind of down on their luck. They go down to a planet, and it's a small story, meaning it's just a few characters set on this planet. It looks a lot like Earth, but you got to wear spacesuits because the atmosphere and st- it's a western basically. It's like a frontier western. I enjoyed it. The production design I thought was great. Again, it's just, it's, it's it's an indie sci fi movie. Which today means you'll have great computer generated effects, you know, but yeah. it's not it's not a big movie. But for story and everything else, I thoroughly enjoyed Prospect. Um, it was it was I'd been wanting to, meaning to watch it. I thought it was a delight. There's a lot of genre. There's a lot of sci fi indie stuff that uses space stuff that tends to be just two people in a room talking and it gets drawn out and kind of boring because you realize they just want to do call it sci-fi but it's just mumble you know you know oh yeah some sort of mumble movie whatever mumble porn um so uh mumble porn. This I, that's why that's where people ASMR. keep wanting to say like how mm-hmm. good they are at sex mm-hmm. but you're like oh you're really, you're mm-hmm. really doing it for you <laughs> 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 very good yeah. it was very big <laughs> this this was yeah i thought this was good you know again you got the 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 young girl plays it pedro pascal's great all the cast was really good yeah small set i i I still can't get into Lost in Space, you know, which is yeah. the big super budget big thing, because it just and was people like people do all right. It like well, and like Brian, you had good stuff to say about Lost in Space. I liked it, but if I loved it, I probably would have finished it. Oh, you didn't even finish that first season. Yes, my kids. And I, I, I blame my family. They all betrayed me, and they all watched the rest of it without me. And okay. I intended to get around and getting around. Well, that's just the t- sometimes you're like, ah, I'm into it, but I'm not, don't feel compelled. And that's sometimes like, there's a lot of shows that are 10 episodes. I got six or seven in and I'm like, ah, I haven't had the ones that pulled me in. I've had, ah, it's good, it's good, but good. But like Lost in Space, one of those things was like that. And it, it wasn't getting better for me. But uh, again, Prospect's different. It's a feature, just a feature length movie, but it's indie. Understand you're watching, you know, Small budget, small budget film, but I, I, it was just fun. I'm not telling, oh, it's gonna blow your mind. How does it, how fun. does it stack up next to, say, Monster or uh, the Europa Report? Uh, considering uh, I couldn't friggin' finish Europa Report because I got bored to death. Yep. And uh, Monster, Monsters is worth watching, not to be confused, the old syndicated horror show. Um, Monsters is interesting from the point of view of just looking. It's kind of like a sky captain kind of movie. Like, look at what a small yes. group of people made. Yeah, you know, no, Monsters it, one it, guy. You know. Yeah, and, and plus also like that being a pedigree. Uh, that's the guy that went on to do what was the movie with the trees that look like humans? Uh, the Lord of the Rings with the end. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what we're thinking of. Uh, are we talking about? Gareth Edwards, yeah, who yeah. did Rogue yeah. One? No, Rogue I, I, Godzilla? did he not do uh, not not Supernatural? What was it called? Doggone it! It was the day and date release that came out in 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 theaters and on Netflix internationally at the same time. I guess it's probably mm-hmm. not that movie. Yeah, Somebody yeah Gareth, right he went on to do Godzilla. He looks like a giant tree. 
Yeah. No, that's not. He's what like I'm kind of green, of. right? Like trees. You're, are you? It's 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 uh, a bunch of women who there's like I'm, a time distortion thing. Annihilation. Remember that's that the one I'm thinking. Annihilation. Of. Yeah. Thinking of annihilation. So he did uh, not do that. I'm I, assuming. I don't no, that was uh, one of my favorite directors, and I can Alex annihilation. Garland. I just was. Not... Did annihilation? Okay, Alex Garland. Yeah, uh, Alex yeah. Garland, who I think is was an amazing writer, really good director. That that movie was just, I I could get into the book. Annihilation of Monsters occupy very similar niches in in my mind, yeah. and I, I don't think I'm crazy to feel that Remember, way. No, I understand. Godzilla is going back into the ocean, and the news says King of the Trees. <laughs> uh, on on the note of monsters, for me is like Godzilla. watching Rebel without it, like watching El Mariachi. You know, yeah. yes, the, yes. You know, oh, this is now really cool because I get like this one guy did all his VFX stuff. Right. That's cool. Yeah, uh, pro no, prospect like, yeah, yeah. Mon Monsters. I remember watching uh, half of it with Brian, and I'm like, this is an amazing special effects reel. I'm, <laughs> yes, uh, what an exciting idea that he got real actors to just act out his special effects reel. <laughs> yeah, uh, prospect. No, there's a story there. It's it's a solid western type story. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. There's world building. There's a lot of, you know, there's there's this world they live in is this, you know, we're, we're exploring outer parts of, you know, distant worlds and stuff. And, you know, but we're in this tiny, 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 if you like the expanse, you know, prospect feels like something could kind of fit within some part of that if the expanse was, you know. So, so when do they give more than lip service to, you know, physics? Oh, yeah. No, they, they, I mean, almost all of it takes place on the planet. They go down to this prospecting planet. It's almost all that takes place there. But their realities are very real realities about, about food, fuel, things like that. Again, it's a very simple story, but it, it's the, the, yes, it is a very, you know, that it felt like a real universe. Yeah. Did you, I mean, did you, I'm yeah. assuming I'm reading between the lines and in, in the idea that this is a Western, a frontier Western story that on some level it's a resource limitation reality where yeah i mean it's it's yeah it's just i only have 75 units of quantex left and these many emotional beats to resolve with my daughter before this monster eats us all well i and mean i mean it's not tree. i mean i don't want to no no no, 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 no just no, no, no. let me speculate wildly <laughs> and project yeah. onto this Enjoy. i think i think you'll dig it if you don't did you rent uh, it or did you stream it somewhere you know, I think you know one of the things. One of my picks I've been be you have know, said before is if you have a library system that supports uh, both. Um, there are a couple different apps that like give yeah, you like, like uh, Linda, and there, there's uh, we talked about it. Just uh, in fact, uh, we we got an email last week on the Cord Killers program where somebody was reminding that not all libraries have a lot of money, and that there are lower cost uh, alternatives like Hoopla and and yep. uh, a bunch of other stuff. Um, yeah, it might have been Hoopla that was, was was on there. Yeah, so I think I found it one of those. And what, what's interesting about Hoopla, like on the Apple TV, it won't show you what's on there. It'll show you what's in other other things, so you have to go into the apps. So I think I may have found it in Hoopla or, or one of the other services. So hmm. by all means, just a little note, many library systems say subscribe to these services you go online, register your library card, then you can download an app like I did for my Apple TV, which then allows me to watch these movies straight up on my Apple TV. And, you know, if you want to walk did, the righteous path and, did, and not be, you know. Did I just see Hoopla has the boys? If you have a library card, you can watch the boys? Um, I can't tell if that's an audio book version of the uh, boys. Got it. Okay. Oh, the they, comic. It's probably the comic because they have comics too. Yeah, they have comics yeah. on here too. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, audiobooks, all sorts. It's a great resource. You know, there's a lot of cool stuff out there that isn't pushed in front of us. And so, yeah. Oh. All right. It's been weird. God damn right. right. Nice. Quick break. All right, yeah, we can take a short break here. Come back for after things. Everybody, hold your horses. Hi, Justin. Hold. Hey, Bryce, what's going on, man? We're going to spend a lot of time together. We will, because then we're going to have Night Attack after this. We're rolling right in. Yeah. Um, I, um, <clears throat> did you ever, did you ever get into, um, any of those MMOs like Warcraft or, uh, uh, uh the, like they got Final Fantasy 14 now. You get into any of those MMORPGs? No. I, I've certainly gotten into RPGs, but I never... I, that was at a point where I was understanding my addictive personality, and I understood that, like... Well, I, I'll, I'll say this. Number one, 
as a as a thing I would do by myself, I never really was into enough of the video game culture to understand which ones are worth paying for like a subscription or something like that. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and at the time that I was like probably at my most likely to dive in just because I had more free time, uh, the, the, the free to play options were not things that like, I think you really had to be like into them to like, uh, uh, be to, a part of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually here, wait two seconds. I just realized something. Okay. Go for it. Uh, well, I, uh, just recently started, uh, getting to Grand Theft Auto Online, which is super weird because I like never liked James. You want to get a mic? You, you got some? It looked like you were. I'm, I'm just happy to be here at the time being. We'll uh, oh, okay. We'll burn that bridge when we cross it. Oh okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was mentioning something about like the free to play stuff, and I was ready to basically lift my phone up and just be like Hearthstone. Oh sure, sure, sure. Hearthstone is is uh big free i mean that's that that's an even sort of more insidious thing the the free-to-play games versus you know the mmos which are very like there's a very strong transaction going on right like oh pay yeah. for service and you get the game well it doesn't help when you have like quote-unquote pros playing that game showing you exactly how because they're so good they can do it for free sure sure uh, what hearthstone yeah yeah so you see these guys play a deck that They've not paid anything for it. Look how easy it is. You can get to Legend with this free deck. Sure. And you're like, well, you've also been playing since day one, so pretty much any deck I put in your hands, you're going to be able to pull this off no problem. Oh, that's interesting. I don't perceive it as a problem of the quality of the decks or even a problem of um, you know how much money it costs or whatever. But to me, their real advantage is the fact that they are able to play for hundreds and hundreds of hours at a time. Like that, that that's the real thing that matters. And the big thing that helps them is that you've got this fan base sitting there going, keep well, you're, going, you're doing great. Right. Kind of or thing. or uh, not only giving feedback, but also like they're able to tell their wives that uh, I'm making money. I'm doing my job. <laughs> so I get to keep on going. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, so I, was, I, was, I, I brought up Grand Theft Auto Online because I've been kind of getting into that the past week or so. Because um, it's a very weird prospect, right? Like, it's free with Grand Theft Auto V, which has been out for a million years at this point. Um, but it's crazy because it, has, it still has a lot of that, like, MMO stuff. Like, there are things that you can grind for. There are things you can earn up. Um, but it also, like, has a lot of free-to-play elements because it comes free with this other big game that most people that a lot of people have they you know you can buy the the shark cards to f for real money to spend and get in-game money uh it's it's been a really weird experience because i i haven't had um i've dabbled with some other mmos but i haven't like really enjoyed them this the same way because at, uh, at the end of the day it's still grand theft auto so, so so you are enjoying it i think so yeah i think so it's funny how you have to say because <laughs> this is like my third or fourth time spending a week with this game right and so i'm ready in four days to feel like oh this is bullshit I'm i pissed. bought the witcher 3 last night oh wow yeah you didn't have the witcher 3 already no uh did you start it i just started it it's a very good game uh I'm, it's long it, the, the problem is the beginning asks you all these we'll questions get there. yes exactly it asks you all those questions about other bullshit that and no all, one knows and all then you the pick questions that. you pick I'm, all the racist ones yes I, all, I, i'm, I'm like i'm like whatever i get it you're asking you're, you're telling me in advance that i'm going to be disappointed you know 75 hours from now when i find out that i'm secretly a nazi or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. that's fine yeah andrew you have any mmo rpg experiences you ever get into World of Warcraft? No, no, no. There we go. Easy conversation. I I had a I had a bad 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 experience uh, with a Vice City years ago, and ah. and, and and said, "Man, like, uh, you're like, so I'm cosplaying as a guy who's addicted to cocaine in Miami, <laughs> and then all of a sudden the Miami cops come up and say, you realize this isn't cosplay. You're just actually doing cocaine here in our town of Miami. And then I got a three-star wanted level, and <laughs> I had to move to the other coast. <laughs> would explain a lot of things. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, you know... If I'm not doing something that that I can clearly define as productive, uh, I feel guilty. And not to say that everything I do is actually productive. That's the trap. That's the lie. 
Um, but I mean, I I will. I never watch, almost never watch TV before like ten o'clock at night. Um, if I do, it's because I'm super stressed out and I've got to unwind. Mm. And I only listen to fiction uh, fiction audiobooks at night, like after it's time to go to bed. And when it's time to go to bed, I only listen to, listen to nonfiction during the. I'm, you know, I'm weird. I'm weirder than you guys realize. Uh, you know and what? I spent my, According... and, and I spent my formative years with Andrew Maine, so <laughs> I bear I bear the hallmarks. According to Arthur C. Clarke, not only are you weirder than we realize, you're weirder than we are conceptually capable of realizing. Beyond the yeah. bounds of our imagination exists Andrew Maine. Yeah. Uh, no, no I, 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 I know it. <laughs> yeah. I, I could draw a circle around it. It's a, it's a weird picture, but I feel like I could draw it from memory. I, I have to like, like literally, like, all right, like, okay, if I get this thing done Thursday, I'll go play my quest. I'll play a game on the quest for like two hours, mm. you know. And then I'll play that. But then to I'm be, thirty to minutes. Be honest, like I'm, I was joking around, but I think that that's part of the reason why we became friends. Like it, it just in bonding over like just doing things because there's a, there wasn't as many people that are like, oh no, do you just want to like do things, and then like not do other stuff or talk about other stuff, but go to movies and do things because those are cool things to do. But in terms of like projects and, and getting stuff done, like that was pretty much it. I think I just I would love to believe that this is not a Skype hiccup. And then instead just Andrew's very disapproving of you <laughs> having spoken. It, out it, of it would do not talk honest. about our thing. He's just like, Justin, again, like, again, like that was fucking way, sacred. I could draw bro. it from memory. <laughs> our thing. Yeah. Our things are hollow ground. Oh, I think we might have actually lost Andrew. Yeah, no, no, no. It's fine. It's just, just disproving Andrew. Man. Can you hear That's us, Andrew? Funny clip. Please, somebody clip that out. That was definitely. <laughs> uh, give us a full screen. <laughs> um, dude, Vegas. Vegas. What's uh, up with in Vegas for five days? There are I feel so. Like, I feel like I, like I'm still decompressing from just the like on mars quality of of being in vegas for five days like more than other places for whatever reason it's just like the time and the energy and the like lifestyle and the like uh oh, like even not like the like super boozing kind of thing but just the like oh i'm just gonna go here i'm gonna get that and everything's five seconds away and like Eh, the Wi-Fi really isn't good, and it's DefCon, so I probably shouldn't do X, Y, or Z. Like, and also, all these people are here. I should probably hang out with these people. Like, there's just like now you're back in the real world, and it's like, oh, I had a whole nother cadence to like life. Like Vegas will not allow you to live life on your cadence. Yeah, uh, I got one uh, back with us is uh, one Andrew Main. Uh, maybe you can hit that uh, horizontal mode for me, Pimp. Yeah, try to get fix it first. Um. Did I crash? He texted me. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, the computer's like, Andrew, you're not allowed to talk about our working relationship like that. Stop it, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, per our blue pill agreement, I curate all of your experience. Yeah. There is only one promise you must make. Do never share our bond. Do not make me install the blue pill muzzle. <laughs> Do not me <laughs> enter brushwood protocol. Uh, <laughs> well, how... Uh, can we can we set a hard out for this? Because I feel like there's so much good stuff to talk about uh, that I'm afraid we'll go long on this. Okay, you want to say what? Uh, what, what uh, just... I, I, first of all, both Justin and I went to DefCon. We could talk about Vegas, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, that'll eat into a bit of the content for Night Attack. Also, we have longtime uh, friend of the show James Harrison here, who sent in like half of all of our greatest questions for after things. Uh, 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 so, so I'm just, I'm just saying, like, if we're worried about going long, let's say we set a little time limit. Uh, all right, so it's six forty-five now. If we, if we said forty forty-five minutes, let's do it. Let's give Andrew time to get his computer up and up and at him, at him, ant. Ooh. Ooh. What? Sorry, I switched back to the computer. Yeah. <laughs> I think my code editor has been causing crashing. So I did wait I until the third. <laughs> no, that was good. <laughs> it's like it's the opposite of Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let me 
me see if we can get this to force refresh your NDI. Oop. No, I think I like disapproving your NDI. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let me let me jump out of this call and jump back in and see if that refreshes you. How about that? Got it. Let's check uh, my video settings. But uh, hey, I know we're still live, but like, still uh, live. hey, Justin, know how I know that we were already drunk by the time we got to Matt Donnelly's house. It, it's a very weird color correction on your face. Oh, it's using my the eyesight on. Okay. Let me switch things. It totally won't screw things up. Okay. Uh, oh, my God. Hold on. We're in shorts, everybody. Watch out. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is probably maybe. Look at, uh, wow. Watch out for the bell end. Here it comes. Ooh. ooh. Look at yeah. that side. Look at that side. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> just big bone. Just big no, bone. No, right? this is not. <laughs> uh, did I mention I went to the Magic Castle chili cook off last night? Ooh. <laughs> no. I had a chili cook off, which. Sounds like fun, but then like the theory of being trapped in the basement with a bunch of other fellow magicians. Turns out the big gag is everybody has thumb tips in their chili, and they all sue. <laughs> <laughs> but they sued each other, so it kind of canceled. It just canceled out. Actually, they all yeah. sued uh, me <laughs> <laughs> for exposing the fact that they're thumb tips. <laughs> Don't let you talk about Brian. Never heard of it. Yeah. Now, the TT, on the other hand. Oh, can't know. It's not real. I mean, uh, let's not do an ID situation as we talk about the TT or the... Uh... Alrighty. You guys feeling it? Andrew, Andrew, look like you're back. Yeah, I just figured out what an ID was. Sorry. <laughs> Identification. Uh, yeah. Alrighty. Well, then uh, let me catch in for After Things here in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hey, hello, everybody. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Yo. And Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. And we have a studio guest. We do, here in Austin, Texas. A longtime contributor to this show. This one, James Harrison. Hey, James. Goddamn hey. correct. Uh, uh, hey, James Harrison. Hey, James, back of your head. Uh, 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 for the uninitiated, if you're a longtime listener to the After Things podcast, uh, James has sent in a number of really good questions that we've given uh, uh, marginal advice, and he has tried some and, and, and brought back feedback. Uh, but, but James was in town for Magic Live, so he hung around for DEF CON. And now it's like, well, I mean, you're already here in the United States. Might as well come on down to uh, uh, to Austin. And so we're, we're hoping to shoot some uh, uh, Modern Rogue and some Scam Nation stuff. But since half of all the best questions that we have came from James, it's like, hey, James, what do you got for us? And then James is like kind of out of questions. Got nothing. <laughs> So he went to I'm his friends. Advice, well, you guys I'm solved all here. my problems. I'm a millionaire now. So I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> but so actually, I'm here to complain about. Uh, yeah, yeah, some of this stuff yeah. uh, uh, hasn't been working. And quite frankly, on weird things, there has not been enough goblin talk. I wanted True. to bring up my grievances. Oh, okay, some feedback. <laughs> hey, hey, man. <laughs> blame the goblins. I They're the right. ones failing to make the uh, news. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm here for some of the other cryptids, but the goblin thing I think ran a natural course as soon as we no, realized oh, that they oh, were a, yeah. a, a cultural euphemism for rapists. <laughs> oh, very much so, very much so. What a journey, though. <laughs> I, I, so, so you asked your friends, like like, yeah. like what are the questions you would love love to ask the guys who uh, presumed to give advice about this stuff? Yeah, uh, I went through. I asked a bunch of my friends. Thank you for helping me. And the one that sort of really stuck out was this one and it was ask them what their end goal is oh you know what's funny is you are saying end goal now but mm -hmm. when you told me this earlier right. what i heard is what's their angle oh sorry and i that's thought why I, that's... I liked what's their angle because it implied that the whole very idea of doing a podcast where we give advice is somehow almost certainly 
uh, what's the vig here? Like, what's right. the scam, right? Uh, uh, I almost like that better. No, I, I kind of actually do too. I, okay, so, I'm so, happy so with we'll, the we'll Chinese go whispers on that. All right, all right, all right. So, uh, 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 gentlemen, what's your angle? Oh, like, what do I get out of this? Yeah. Eh, ah, the Weird Things Podcast, supporting independent podcasters, people who want to be, you know, variety artists of all types. What's your angle? I guess if I were to really put a a, 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 a fine point on it, like, I really like talking. <laughs> and this, he like, does. Many other, he like does. many other varieties of my life, provide me an opportunity to do it and to hone it and get better. But... As for advice, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think that there is, for me, a almost religious sense. I, I loathe and despise zero-sum thinking. Like, I, I if, if you were to identify a thing that I hate the most, that is, like, systemic, that, that is something that if we were better at it, the world would, would immediately become a better place on all these other little uh, uh, strands that I believe run from it. Uh, uh, that is a thing uh, that I that I believe in, and part of that is putting my money where my mouth is in a lot of different areas, including publishing sales data and like doing the the, the how to lose forty thousand dollars talk, and on a personal level, like with Night Attack, like talking about embarrassing things in my own life or or uh, uh, things that uh, culturally are are you you wouldn't or shouldn't say about yourself uh, or revealing your true feelings about things. And so this is kind of the business focused element of it. If we have gotten a number one, I guess on some level, it is also self gratifying to know that like somebody would give a rat's ass what the hell I had to say. But on the other level, it's like, Hey, look, I, I just want this to be normalized. Like I, I've always believed that we are all better. The more we all help each other and share stuff. And, and the, the, the instinct to not do that, the instinct to protect the instinct to keep secret, uh, can can be damaging. Yeah, I, I have thoughts, but Andrew, you know, I had a I had a really neat conversation Saturday, and I mentioned my other podcast uh, with Marcus Eddy. Marcus is an amazing magician and magic creator. He's worked with David Blaine. He's currently worked with Justin Willman on Willman's show, Magic for Humans. And Marcus is up on uh, was like on last week on Penn and Teller. Fool us and fool them. And every time I get together with Marcus, it's kind of like um, I'm the, the 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 slightly older guy telling you like, well, this is what I've learned. This is what I think and whatever. And you know, this is my thoughts on stuff. You know, and and. He's, you know, he, I learned a lot of really cool magic from him, and I'm always telling him, like, well, maybe about this. What if you tried this? What if you did this in kind of a career sort of sense? And it's kind of, and I always sort of start off like, I don't want to, I don't like, I don't want to speak out of place, but I'm like, you know, whenever I talk to people who kind of get it, these are the questions I want, the things I want to want them to tell me, you know, and uh, and we have, you know, great conversations because I feel like, you know, I'm kind of. He's sort of at where I was a few years ago, going, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? And and answering the question about the show is sort of the same thing. It's like, why do I do this? You know, I will sit down with anybody who wants to talk about books if I've got 20, 30 minutes and tell them everything I know about it. And I think I subscribe to Justin's thought that, like, I, I, I do think co competition is real, but it's much rarer than we realize. And And to worry about it when you don't need to is counterproductive when there's a lot more to be gained from collaborating and whatnot, you know, and I've benefited so much from people who could have looked at me as competition, but actually did not and helped me out. But I guess the doing that feels good because I, I guess like for me, it's, I want to put order into the world and, and I maybe naively, naively believe that my opinions and my, my, what I think is my expertise help do that, you know, putting things in order, I guess. Can, can I make a supposition or, or speculation? Um, could it, it, here's what I think uh, is that at some level we're all narcissists and what I perceive we're up to is when we were in our twenties, just getting started, we detected that there was a lot of BS in a, a lot of the, you should do this, you should do that, and a lot of bad advice or whatever. And at some level, 
I, because, uh, spoiler alert, uh, we're not exactly making bank on this show. <laughs> but uh, but what we get is all of us and every episode feeling a little bit lighter. Like we're carrying a little bit less of a burden because we're saying the things that we wish we were flatly told from experienced professionals mm -hmm. 20 years ago. We, we, it, it, it's a little bit of going to confessional, I feel like. Sure. And, and I, I think, I think that's true. And like, I try to figure out, I try to separate ego to say what I still do it if ego wasn't a factor, you know, like, and, and that's cause I ask myself that a lot. Like, am I doing this because not that ego is always wrong, but like, am I doing this because it satisfies my ego or is it doing it because my innate sense of how to add value to the world, I guess, you know? Um, so yeah, which, which in that, um, uh, 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 Ayn Randian kind of thing is like nobody does anything truly altruistically. We 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 all derive a mm -hmm. a fairly significant sense of you know joy and lightness for for having told the oh, truth. Oh yeah, as we yeah. Say. No, I I think it's the part I, you know, like like hypothetically, if you were at a restaurant last week and you saw a guy wearing a Korean War veteran hat, and you realized he found out he's a regular there, and you wanted to buy him a gift card. You know, I think if you tried to do that as honestly as possible and have the staff give them to him, you know, that sort of tells you, OK, it's not about you looking like a hero in front of this person or whatever. It's about your own sense of, OK, I'm doing something and contributing something good. Right. You know, and that's the difference. It's like also there's, 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 there's like YouTube philanthropy and stuff, which some of it I think is good. But some of it is like this. No, that somebody wants to look good doing something for somebody. And some of it just is gross to me. It's like. Like you didn't inspire anybody to do that. You made yourself a hero of a story that didn't need a hero, you know, and, but sometimes it does help, you know, but, and I guess like a show like this, I always think about this. Am I doing it? Cause I want to hear myself talk. Am I doing that right now? Or cause I want to help. So I'll just shut up. <laughs> I mean, I do genuinely want to help. Like I do know that like, and, and I'm not going to parse exactly what's under the hood there. Uh, because if people like it, then, uh, that's cool then that means that there's a relationship and hopefully people are getting something out of it or at the very least, because also it's like, I, I don't, I wouldn't really necessarily, unless you're giving awful advice or you are, or you are asking people to take unnecessary risk or, uh, you know, I think we are all very focused on like have the big idea, but then also focus very deeply on the micro steps one through three. But right. Like, but but also, I feel like we genuinely, for whatever reason, the three of us are sort of born without that uh, mystique-seeking engine. Whatever that uh, celebrity aha-ness, the it factor, whatever, holds seems to hold no appeal for all three of us. And we're like, uh, like we have... It appears to be fairly rare for three people currently trying to make it, trying to make it in the entertainment biz to say... Uh, yeah, look, you're going to be tempted to think this awesome thing is the way it is, but it's not. So stop that. Uh, it looks more like this. And uh, I, I, I don't see that very often anywhere else. Yeah. You know, the part of it, too, it's part of it's hard to evaluate because once you have a thing, you can say, ah, you, you really this thing isn't that important. But it's like it's like, you know. I'm tall. If I was shorter, you know what I tell a shorter version of me, like, ah, being tall is not that great, whatever. It's like, well, you're tall. You, you get the experience of that and like success is kind of like that. You know, you get even like, you know, went to the magic castle last night for a chili cook off. Okay. Um, that's a story unto itself. I like the fact that people come up to me and go, Oh, saw the shark week thing, heard about the shark week thing and all this. That's why I did it. I, I love sharks. Let me make that very clear. I love sharks, but I, I did it for the ego part. I did it for people to go, oh, that's a cool thing you did. You know, not because primarily. I mean, I love sharks. I've been, it's a very, it's a research thing I'm very interested in. But Look, we get it. You secretly hate sharks. That's fine. Well, no, uh, all right, all right. So, rank, so, so, so with, with the Shark Week thing, rank these three, like, career and business interests. And so, like, the business element of your career, if I'm on television now, I will have more options, not only on television, but also with books or anything else. Uh, the straight out ego of having people say, uh, uh, oh my God, you're great. So separate those two out. And then your love for shark research, rank those three. Um, I mean, my love for doing research or something scientifically is extremely high because, but that goes back into ego too. my sense of value and putting order into the world. Like if I feel like 
hey, I've done a cool thing that's a neat thing that I feel good about myself sort of thing. So that's tied into there. I, I would, you know, it's probably a, a split or divided among all of them, to be honest with you. I mean, I think that business is the business reason was a very, very big thing. I chose this thing because it served my goal. And I think that getting to, you know, the, the other question of what's your goal for me, it's like, I have an interest in science and technology. And so all of my projects that I do, I take on uh, outside of just my regular writing tend to push towards there. But even my writing is my characters are all critical thinkers who love science and things like this. And so I try to write like that. So, so I certainly have a career direction, which I go in towards like things that are more of this, that put more of this into the universe are things I will do. That actually opens the door to uh, now that I find out that I misheard the question to begin with uh, the real question, what's your end game, which is fascinating because we don't talk about we talk about beginnings because uh, obviously the three of us were midway through this journey we're all figuring stuff out and we do have advice on the best way to begin and where to go but i i don't even know for a fact that all three of us have a clear vision of our end game do do any of you guys have you have you figured out what it looks like i i don't know and i think it's probably hurt my career i think i've i've spent a lot of time keeping things afloat that maybe if I had, I, I have had over the last year, I think a clearer idea of what I generally like doing and matching that and aligning that with what makes money has been uh, cool. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that there's, there is uh, still some element, even though I've, I've always tried to be realistic about like not wanting the world to just you know, trying to not fall for that seductive element of like, well, someday, you know, uh, Mr. Monopoly is going to come down in a hot air balloon and recognize all my talent and say, hey, congratulations. The the dream you never realized was your dream is now your reality. Uh, but I, I think I, at, at times I can bury myself in enough work where I'm like, well, all right, I'll well, just keep doing this thing that I'm doing in the day to day uh, and then and then worry about it later uh so yeah i don't i don't think i have uh at least nothing that i could put into into words it it the lowest part of my depression you know dealing with that 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 kind of happens in your late 20s of that like oh my god what do i do and and staring up at the ceiling fan watching it spin like man what a cliche moment but still um <laughs> what a cliche i hope i'm not a writer who's famous 20 years from now who relies on such a cheap cliche as he sets up a scene but don't worry that won't happen i'm in my 20s i'm sure i'll become a great writer no i mean no my i remember being you know i remember you know my 20s just sitting there going like uh what am i gonna do i realized i was a flake I mean, you think I'm flaky now. I was a real fl I mean, I just never finished things. I never finished projects. Andrew, that was problem number Andrew, one. Andrew. I said, I could have all the ambition in the world, but if I've never finished anything, it won't matter. But I said, okay, let me get down to the core. What am I? What am I? Because like, I went through a period, like, oh, I spent a year reading every biography I could. I read Walt Disney biographies. I read Steve Jobs biographies about before he came back to Apple. Okay. I mean, I read like everything, everything I could. <laughs> And I had that mistaken assumption that somewhere I'll find the blueprint for me wasn't in any of them, wasn't in any of them. And that's the thing is they they at some point stopped looking for that blueprint and they just started doing the things they wanted to do. And for me, it was like, what do I like to do? And I said, I like to be creative. I like to have traction. I like to see my creativity having traction in the world. You know, being successful is great. But the thing that if if I had a choice between, you know, being a bored billionaire or being a financially independent person that could wake up every day and do what I wanted to do, I'll be that financially independent person waking up every day doing what I want to do. Because I've met bored billionaires. I've met people like that who you, it, you can't say money. Money doesn't solve everything. But no, there are a lot of problems that a lot of people have that money will solve those. But then you get to the next set of problems, which few of us are equipped to solve. And so for me, it was if I can wake up every day and be creative you know, and I can feel have a little bit of security and traction, then I will be a very happy person. So and build to the question of what's your end game. I, if I were to guess, uh, I, I, I know that around five years ago, uh, I guess 10 years ago, I, I started to recognize that, um, you know, the treadmill of, of doing live gigs was problematic because that story usually ends with you being 68 years old and genuinely confused why nobody is booking you for any shows. And, uh, and so instead 
I pivoted my focus to uh, building little engines that would at least keep the lights on and keep my kids going to college and all of that stuff. And I feel like I watched the same thing with you, Andrew, when it came to that's a, it's a fairly drastic pivot for your career when you go from a cruise ship magician to an inventor of magic tricks and then realize that both of those uh, don't make as much money as, while you're asleep as writing novels does. And then just realize, well, I guess I'll just write novels because that does make money while I'm asleep. And and I feel like you have been a really good steward. It's been really fascinating over the last 10 years to watch you build all of these engines, the, each one that, you know, designed to continue to pri provide money when you're 90 years old. And uh, and I feel like I'm following in your footsteps, trying to do that with with different brand properties. You know, the, the funny part was, you know, it wasn't that I realized until two years ago that my primary source of income, though, had been investing. Ha! <laughs> and that was the thing I didn't realize was that that was a thing I was better at than anything else I did. And that was the thing that got me through, you know, lean periods and other periods like that. Because I look back what was the most stable form. And that's sometimes you have to sit back and say, what is your what is your business plan? And I realized, oh, my business plan is I make a lot of money at a certain point and then I squirrel it away. And then live off of that until the next point, you know, and do that. And uh, and I've been lucky and the things now that I've been doing, you know, have been very good. But that, that was sort of a big reality for me was how much of, you know, but what I, really supported but, me was just making smart decisions at several points. I feel like that moment of pivoting and deciding to become good at, uh, you know, because I, I don't think it's dramatic for me to say you didn't start off. Uh, as 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 good of a novelist as you are now, but that decision to invest a decade to become a good novelist was really uh, the delightful thing. Is it sort of reset the time counter back to back to to square one? Because now you have a forty year r runway. Your your best work almost certainly is years and years ahead of you. Whereas yeah. in magic, that that uh, you know you could say, well, based on my age, my size, my athleticism, or whatever. Uh, it, it would be harder to expect my best magic show to be ahead of me. Yeah, no, I meant literal investing was a thing that really helped me. But when it comes to investing in my time and stuff, as I've gotten older, I've gotten much better at figuring out. Like, I was very lucky with writing that I went from it was from the day I said I'm going to do it. It was two years later that I had a book deal and meetings with directors and stuff about what to do. And it was a, a wonderful, magical time. But part of it was having spent so much time wasting time, I knew, well, if I'm going to take this seriously, I know what not taking it seriously looks like. I got to do the opposite of that, which was, you know, we talk about, we, before we talk, I've talked about like, I don't like, not, like it was a year of writing. Like, you know, they talk about, oh, you got to write your first million words before you're really good. I'm like, great, I'm going to write a million words in a year. <laughs> you know? Got him. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a thing that you can keep getting better at. But um, to anybody, like, my advice, though, I will, I will talk to the investing thing. That's the thing that Brian brought up, like in magic, as I realized, yeah, you, they're, they're entertainers who they're doing really well and they keep thinking that next big break is going to be the thing that's really going to make them financially secure. And then all of a sudden they find out that like, yeah, nobody wants to hire Wieners the clown anymore, you know, and, you know, you're like, now what? And, and I saw a lot of entertainers, friends, people I thought were extremely talented that reached that point. And that made me super paranoid. So I was always like, put money away, put money away, you know, yeah, do this, uh, do this. There, there are uh, I always think of it as a money bicycle. At some point, you spend your um, your most active uh, years as an artist uh, designing a money bicycle. And then you hop on and you pedal and you realize the faster you pedal, the more money comes out of the money bicycle. And uh, uh, many people, many, many, many people, friends uh, uh, just assume that, well, I could keep pedaling. As long as I'm pedaling, I'm good. And then at some point, the money bicycle uh, re puts out less money and they're all genuinely surprised. I'm like, I don't, I, I, I don't want to do that. I want, uh, I want a money engine. Well, and it, and it's like I look at my own stupid behavior where it's like I'll make more money, so I'll spend more money, you know. And and you know I think about the time when I was deciding between L.A. and Florida, and I kept a house in Florida for several years. I like the fact that like, oh, I own real estate there, but I wasn't being used, it wasn't being Airbnb, and it was an ego sort of thing, and that cost, you know. And I look at you know I've seen that you know when we first started you know the iTrix business. You know, we had a we had one warehouse, and I'm like, oh, the next warehouse next door is open. Let me go rent that warehouse too. I could have just cleaned up the place. 
<laughs> and it's dumb things, you know. And I think, you know, I, I look at that, you know. Yeah, but there's so. there's also something to the fact that uh, all of those experiences, in some weird way, contributed to where you're at right now. So I, oh. I like, like, I, let me say this much to answer your question, James. Um, I don't know what any of our end games are, but I think that we're all unified in firmly saying whatever our end games are, we're all already very aware that they're they're wrong, that they're they're all wrong, and that we're already pre comfortable with whatever alternate things happen instead. I know I love tech. Like I, I mean, I literally, you know, the the thing that it got me inspired, excited the most was to sell a TV special about me doing something really cool tech. And then doing stuff with that, you know, like I, I before the podcast, after the podcast, I'm going to open up my code editor and work on, you know, any of a half dozen projects I'm working on that are they're not they're And I, I, I like ask myself, like, what's the goal of these things? And, and they're not like they're not schemes like I used to sort of have. They're like, what's a thing that I can create that could be useful to other people and myself? What's the best idea I have right now? You know, and I don't know what that is. Yeah. Also, uh, for the record, we're not defensive. You're defensive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, idiot. What's your goal, James? <laughs> yeah. uh, you want to uh, you want to push From... me around? You think you're better than me? <laughs> yes, but that's beside the point. Um, listen, you're gonna throw it up there. I'm gonna I'm gonna take advantage of it. But the three things that I got from it was basically that uh, learn to invest your money. Get really happy that you might be living in an RV at Walmart parking lots, and you, this is feeding your superiority complex. Got it. No, 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 no. Nice. Hey, also, make sure to buy a VR rig. Uh, rig. There. Yeah. A- am I close? Yeah. No, that totally tracks. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. No, I, I, I love the answers that I got, actually. I was like, yay, they're not quite sure, but they're confident, and it looks like they're going in the right direction because... I like where it's going. So, well, I I'm I'm gonna say that like for all the creatives out there, and again, I don't want to sound like like you know some some TV financial person. Like, let me tell you, but like, the more creative and risk taking you are, the more you want to think about. Uh, I got into TV and was able to do what I did because one, I talked my best friend into coming in and help run my business when I was out in Hollywood trying to you know, you know, smooth my way into things. Um, two, because, you know, when that business wasn't always doing so great, not because of him, let me make that very, very clear. Uh, 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 <laughs> what? Oh, no, no, no. no. Hey, 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 no. Look, 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 no. we all, we no, all no. get it. You're, you're I'm, I, I, laughing at laughing. No, no, no. I mean, it was, it was partially was because money I'd saved and put away made, allowed me to go do that. You know, you see people who, you know, people want to come out to, you know, make it into business and to spend time, it takes time and a lot of energy and you do things that you do not get rewarded for years sometimes, you know, so, you know, having that kind of, you know, security or I'm mean, one, not caring, but two security helps. Very cool. Uh, so, so we, we have a bit of a time crunch this episode. Do, uh, do we have any more picks or? I want to know what James goal is though. Yeah. What's yeah, your goal? James. What's your end game? Yeah, normally, we just talk about your question. Yeah, and what's what's your it. angle? It's an what's email, but angle? you go now. Answer, answer now. How does it feel? <laughs> go. How does it feel? Go. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I. That's just it. That's kind of the thing that threw me off when I asked my friends, like, "What's your angle? What's your angle?" I don't know. Like, it's. I wanted to just be an entertainer. I thought it would be fun, and now ten years later. As a professional, I'm like, uh, yeah, that's probably something I should look at. No, and yeah. that... my advice is always figure out what you hate. What you hate is more important than what you love. So in in your case, like I know, for me, uh, I met those 65 year old uh, old timers in the variety circuit, and I was very upset by watching them convince themselves that the kids had changed and that that the world had changed and that it wasn't their fault and that that they were entitled to keep working the way they did 40 or 30 years ago um and i realized i hated everything about that delusion that they were building in their mind and i realized i would never ever ever let me become that old carny who sold themselves the lie that the market has changed and instead i i would figure out 
why are they there and how can I never find myself in that place? So uh, whenever, whenever, uh, whenever you're trying to pick from a buffet, it's hard to pick what you like, but it's pretty easy to pick what you hate. And that was the thing that, that drives most of the decisions I've made over the last 10 years. I like it. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> you know what? Uh, my value as a person is not determined by your approval. Yeah, my so name is Dan but, Hunt. Yeah, but that that's doesn't... Justin's yeah. job, guys. Yeah, I'm the only one that can validate Brian's ego. <laughs> but that doesn't stop me Real from thing. liking it. Yeah. So, all right, any picks at all? The boys, it's great. You can't uh, okay. pick the boys three weeks in a row. No, no, but you know who can is James on his very first pick. Hey, what's your pick, James? Uh, well, now I feel like I have to say it's the boys, uh, but I absolutely loved it. I mainlined it last night because I didn't want spoilers from Brian. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, did you see this episode? I'm like, no, shut up. Nope, smart That's move. All right. Uh, right. Also, yeah. Yeah, my, my pick is DEF CON. Uh, everybody should go to DEF CON. It's great. Uh, DevCon's great, and you want to know what? I got a chance to meet uh, uh, Jack Resider from Darknet Diaries, and he was a very pleasant, uh, a pleasant young man. And he is uh, very rarely do you meet people that you only know their voice, and uh, they're they look similar to how you would think. And I don't know if I had an idea of what his face would look like, but he was exactly as skinny as I thought he would be. <laughs> well, what's funny? What's funny is he showed up uh, last year. He was very much wearing a Darknet Diaries uh, T-shirt, and I'm just like, that's got to be Jack Resider, I assume. But this year, you know, he's getting a little more discreet, so he had sunglasses on, and, uh, and, yeah. I'm, and I'm like, not fooling me. That's definitely Jack Resider. <laughs> Only yeah. he's cool enough to wear sunglasses this year. No, it was cool because he um, uh, he went to go meet with Darren, or ran into Darren uh, from uh, our, our friend from Hack 5, and I've been telling Darren, like, dude, this is a great show that kind of explains InfoSec in a very relatable, normal way. Oh, uh, you should you should be sponsoring, like, like uh, buying advertising for you in general is dumb because you already own the market share in the group of people that are buying all your products. But like, if you were going to experiment with ads on anything, it should be on that show because it is a great, like, for people people who aren't in the community, or aren't in InfoSec, but are fascinated by it. And those are the kind of people that are going to be like, oh, cool, I could spend some money and buy one of these gizmos. Uh, so Darren literally brings him over to the Hack 5 booth to just say, this is my friend Justin who keeps telling me to advertise on your show. So, like, it's, uh, I mean, a sweet moment, but kind of embarrassing that it's like, <laughs> hey, me bring like oh goofy's your favorite character at disney world look who's here goofy's here uh but uh but then he knew who i was so i was immediately validated uh, that he knew he knew me from night attack because no, he, he had seen you on night attack he, he, he's a genuinely awesome guy and 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 really good friend and i'm so happy for his success and his show is so deserving of all of the the popularity it's achieving yeah and I'm glad he's at DEF CON because that's like 90% of the episodes that involve the talk at DEF CON. So it makes sense. Uh, I'll do a pick. Uh, Two Minute Papers. It's a YouTube channel. Really, really good. Uh, a lot of great stuff on there. I forget who did. I just backed him on Patreon. Uh, he finds pretty good science papers, a lot of it artificial intelligence stuff, and kind of breaks it down into two or three minutes. And they're very digestible, really informative. Um, so Two Minute Papers is a great, great, great it's smart it's just that we're living this wonderful age of dedicated people creating content like this like scott manley's rocket reports and stuff which are really well done uh the guy who does uh uh defunct land you know those are just these things are great and it's it's glad to see that these things are now businesses where people can keep making these things that's awesome yeah uh i got a quick pick uh, Nobody asked you, Brian. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. That's uh, like, I doesn't was, mean we don't want like, that it, That would Brian. be funny to say, and then Andrew said it, and I'm like, well, I'm glad I'm validated now. That's good. <laughs> uh, We're both jerks. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I, I play a lot of mobile phone games, and um, uh, I had a really uh, interesting experience downloading uh, the other day, because I heard someone on a podcast talk about doing it, and... Uh, 
it it really got me to try out the New York Times crossword puzzle app. Um, <laughs> it is, uh, it's really oh stop stop. Uh, it's really well made as as far as like a puzzle uh, interface goes. It works very intuitively. They have a lot of assistance. Uh, they have links to like when they write articles about the the the, the puzzle, so they actually get like oh actually this puzzle has this theme and so. You might have you, it, it helps lay it out a little more directly if uh, uh, if, if you're kind of a crossword newbie like me. But I, I don't know. It was cool. They even like list like, oh, this is an easy rank puzzle. This is a tricky rank puzzle. This is a, a hard puzzle. Um, it, it's it's very well um, fully featured and it um, it it uh, it makes me consider subscribing to the New York Times crossword <laughs> subscription service. <laughs> It's propaganda, Bryce. Is how it starts. <laughs> Tally as well says, uh, uh, "Do I listen to the It's a Thing podcast with Tom and Molly?" No, that's not where I heard it from. I heard it from um, like "What a Time to Be Alive" or something um, from, from some completely different different podcast. But yeah, they were mentioning it, and I was like, "Yeah, that's the that's the crossword people, the New York Times." And so uh, it's cool, and I think you can get a certain amount of puzzles for free. So uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. Works. Yeah. Yeah. Groovy. All right. So everybody's got picks in. Everybody's got their picks. Yeah. Justin, did, you have picks. One? did you have one, Justin? Was it Dark Knight Diaries? I, oh, yeah. Yeah. Dark Knight Diaries. All right. Sweet. It's been after. Yay. You said the thing. You said the thing. That's the name of the show. I love it. That's why I listen all the time. All right. Uh, for some reason, Brian had a, had a bolt out of the door, but uh, we are going to come back in probably an hour probably be closer to an hour uh with night attack pre-show and um yeah uh, you got anything coming up the next couple of days streams guys uh i mean no streams tomorrow stream thursday stream friday not going to a con this weekend that's <laughs> very exciting and rare for this month uh but then off to Austin after that, Out of Bounds Comedy Festival, Tuesday the 27th, Dragon Con right after that. Very nice. Andrew, any periscopes? Nothing? I should. I should. I've just been, you know, I finished writing a book, so I like, I finished, right, busted my ass to finish a book that won't come out till 2021. <laughs> you know, just always, oh, finally got into the deadline. I'm like, sit there. But then I'm like, well, now I got to do what I want to do for fun, coding. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, for real. Alrighty, well, I uh, hope you guys have a good evening. If you don't join us for Night Attack, but join us for Night Attack in about an hour. Bye, y'all. Yes.